because I do believe that all the product is always new. Um, there are a significant amount of discontinued SKUs. Sizzix is probably uh, the one line that discontinues the most SKUs. I think we have maybe uh, 60 or so discontinued SKUs because warehouse space, we've evolved. So a lot of times if people are looking at seasonal dyes or everyday dyes, like ice skates this for Christmas, they're like, where's the ice skate dye? I'm like, that was last year. So it is the one line that even though most of my other lines are kind of timeless, they continue to come, not with Sizzix. Sizzix is one of those things that if you see a dye or a folder that you like, get it because they don't announce that it's going away. They don't give anybody any warning. Not even me. Um, <laughs> they're like, so that's done. So um, let's start here because I think this is really charming. This was uh, really hot for us during the season when we did the introduction of the dwellings. And the dwellings are very cool. It starts out with this structure and the ability that we can alter this structure. So we launched the dwelling. We launched the winter overlay. We also did the bell tower so you can change that dwelling. Uh, we did this throughout the holidays and I think people really embrace that. But what I like is that we've also kind of evolved. We, we're gonna, and there are some cool things planned this year. This is only the beginning. Um, so the latest overlay is the cottage overlay. So this is the overlay that turns uh, this into this little college. I called it a bungalow because I think it's really cute and charming. So the bungalow is very cool because it's got this little dormer add-on where you can add these onto the rooftops. Uh, it also has these little shutters, the windows, and the picket fence, and that's what comes on this die. And it's a steel wool die, so the bungalow is really cute. This particular one ruined the magic. Um, this one, you see that little brick texture that's using the new mini stencil with the texture paste, so that's how we can create all that great little brick texture. And you see this little shake roof. This is done using the new rooftop die. So I designed a steel wool die that will cut three different types of rooftops. It will cut shake, <laughs> tile, and slate. And what it does is it just cuts the strip, and all you do is alternate when you're doing it. So you put the put it face up, face down, face up, face down, and that's how you get that difference in pattern. And then it all has that little top piece that covers the top of your roof so you don't have any rot edges. Very cool, it gives it a whole new look and charm and character to it. So in addition to that, we have introduced a new dwelling. This is the brownstone. The brownstone's a very tall dwelling, very skinny but it's got a really great proportion because I wanted something to scale if we were going to build a village, right? We needed some different buildings. With this brownstone, you're gonna get this base here. You'll see this one has the bell tower on it. This base piece is included in the brownstone die because the pitch of the roof is different. And like I said, when we release this, all of these overlay dies are going to work with every building. So you can see that the winter overlay still is in proportion to the brownstone. Um, the cottage overlay, I did a cottage brownstone, but I don't even see it. Know where they put it, but I've done it. Oh, there it is down here. I've done a cottage overlay. So here I put those dormers on the outside because you can glue them wherever you want. But they kind of took it and the designers really went to town. We give other buildings, are like, let's go for it. So here you can see that these are connected, and that green did such an amazing job. You can see that incorporating both connected together to make, yeah, a little space. It's very cool. I love this one. This one is yeah, that's brilliant. Cool. That's cool. Taking both of those and just creating a longer building just by connecting them on the inside. Isn't that great? And then taking the bell tower but not using the base because you wanted it to be more of like a schoolhouse. It's amazing, I love this. I love this little village too where taking these and pretty much just done a little monotone kind of monochromatic look. I love that look. I love this little pink village here. I thought this was super clever. This <laughs> is the front porch step flipped upside down to make a flower box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't waste anything. <laughs> that's the cool thing. You know, you're giving that, like, I've got this idea. Cool and run with it. So I think that's really exciting. Uh, we move on to uh, some words. So, of course, if you're into journaling or planning, we did some block and script words that are really for planners. So we did uh, the days of the week as well as the months and every day. So you can use those in your planner. You can also use weekend, tomorrow, today, days of the week. So if you're into planners or pocket pages, you can use those dies. One of the things that I love is this negative space. These dies were really designed for the negative space. We've seen what we did with Marquis, but you can cut through paper, cut through photos, use the positive and negative if you want on a project. Uh, combine the fonts. This is just using that script font, but stacked up four layers of cardstock to make it look like chipboard. So remember, you can always stack your layers if you're using any Xyron or anything like that. So I think that's really uh, clever thing when it comes to working with this. We also did new shadow press. The shadow press is going to be obviously the months that we had that set last year. 
We did introduce a new framework. This is just the plus sign. That's the new addition. And you can see with frameworks, it really does lend itself well to mixed media because you can use it and cut it. Uh, Ada created that sample, which I absolutely love. It creates a, a whole different life to it. But you can use positive and negative space out of frameworks, which I think has been so popular. So I'm glad people like these because I got to do another one. Then up here you can see this is the much softer side of it. Uh, you can see the individual doilies and even though I talked briefly about the doily, to me what makes this most exciting is that it is not a symmetrical doily. It is not a vector drawing. This is a crochet doily that we have worked the art in. So it's all imperfect. It's so cool when you cut it out because it has that great uh, organic look to it. You can see that we've used it as a backdrop here. We've incorporated the new lace, so there is a lace die that also works with the doily. So you can create some nice trim using the tiny tattered floral, using the wildflower, combined with the negative space of mixed media as a stencil. Um, here, this is the layered butterfly. The layered butterfly die is very cool. It's this one right here. It contains four dies, two butterflies. One of the dies is going to cut the solid shape. The next die is going to cut the detail shape. So you can use either or. If you want solid butterflies, you can cut that out. Or if you want to stack them, you can create this wonderful layered effect. And if, even if you don't want to adhere both layers, maybe you just want to adhere the body, you can have both layers of wings overlap, which I think is really great. Those are fun. Of course, we talked about the stitch. Um, well, then there's these. <laughs> these have a whole mind life thing of their own. I don't know. I don't get it other than I'm glad everyone thinks they're as crazy as I did. <laughs> I really got that art just for my own personal thing. Um, and then they've just really taken off. So, uh, Bird Crazy, we teamed up with Stampers Anonymous. Now, Stampers Anonymous does the Bird Crazy, crazy things, crazy thoughts. And so, Sizzix was like, hey, we'd do some dies for that. So, these dies do work with the Stampers Anonymous stamps. That's the Bird Crazy and crazy things that we did last year. This year, we mix these, combine them, and put them on one set as mini Bird Crazy and crazy things. And Sizzix did a die set to match. So, the stamp set has the things and the birds on one the dies, things, and the birds in one pack. And these are mini. There they are right there. So not only did I shrink it down, but I also flipped the perspective so the birds can look at each other, talk, communicate, have a little relationship going on. So um, I just think they're a lot of fun. And we introduced the crazy cats, and the dies are coming for those too. Yeah, because they're like, we'll do dies for those too. Yeah. <laughs> they're crazy. Um, here, let me kind of move out of the way. Here's a great sampling of uh, mixed media. You can see here that typo mixed media, that typewriter. You can see the lace that we used here. There's just the remnants of the brick. Really a lot of fun. I think it just does some great effect when we're working with it on cards. So I love that we can really use that positive and negative space on the mixed media. It's really cool. Down here, while you're over here, you can see all the different texture fades. Now, even though it really took on that kind of dapper look where I talked about using those textures, you see we really tried to show that even though you have maybe a herringbone or houndstooth, you can still give it a softer feel because it still has a great graphic element to it <laughs> as well. That's nice. I love this card. So this is using that tailored texture fade, and all it did is go in with a white pen and colored random ones. It totally looks like a cutout, doesn't it? I love that. <coughs> then up here, this guy, Steampunk. You can see a lot of Steampunk guys this time um, with Dapper. There's the scale comparison of the, of the Gadget Gears and Gadget Gears 2. You can see how we've overlapped some of those. Um, you can see here those small gear heads for the footlets mixed with the dapper. Dapper using the positive and the negative space. And here is one of my favorites, the stencils. So the stencil number cuts out that stencil. Makes a really, really, really cool stencil. <coughs> Finally, typo. Um, this was the very first alphabet I ever wanted in Stew Will Die, and they were like, that is never going to happen, buddy. Um, <laughs> there are so many bends in every single letter, and all the steel dies are bent by hand. Um, that's how they make them. It's really crazy to see that you think like the steel just goes in a machine and spits out a die. No. There is pegs on a board, and someone is bending around every peg to make each die. So, to have that many bends around a letter, pretty cool. It's still computerized, but someone is still feeding that steel on, on that. So I love the fact that I've got a large typewriter font to uh, cut out chipboard, fabric, um, any of those substrate sheets. I love this card. I love that it was done backwards like a typewriter striking on a highlight. That was awesome. That was my favorite. So cool. Yeah. So those are the new things for alterations. It's cool stuff.